What is up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be 10 things I wish I knew before I started my fitness journey. Honestly, I wish that I had had someone just tell me these things. So I thought I would make a video of my top 10 tips to help you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I made. As always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and smile. These tips are not going to be in any particular order. I'm just going to have kind of a chit chat with you guys, keep it nice, raw and honest, and let you know the 10 things that I truly wish someone had told me from day one. So first up, we have not comparing yourself to anyone else on your fitness journey. So when I started out my journey, you know, there was a lot of Fitspo stuff coming out uh, on social media and just in magazines and things like that. So I would always look at where I was starting out my journey to people in magazines. And I mean, it wasn't as big as it was now with YouTube and Instagram. There's a lot more Fitspo stuff out there, but I was always looking at magazines and reading those like women's health type magazines and seeing what certain celebrities look like in movies and comparing myself to them. And in all honesty, like the only person I should have been focusing on was myself and what I was doing each day in order to take me closer to my goals, whatever they were at that time. So I think a lot of people, when they start out their fitness journeys, especially when they message me on Instagram, they might look at me or someone else and they'll say, I wanna look like XXX, or even get emails from women out there that say, you know, they wanna sign up to join my squad and they wanna look like this, and they'll send me photos of these certain women and, you know, sometimes body types are just completely different. There's some women that can have lean abs year round. There's some women that store more fat around their core than others. Some people store fat around their hips, their thighs, their back, wherever it is. We all have such different body types. And the most important thing is that you focus on being your best version of you, not a second rate version of someone else. So I do wish that someone had kind of given me a real talk back when I was in university and just told me to like stay in my own lane and focus on myself and what I'm doing because I have learned that through competing and through my years on my fitness journey I've been on my journey for about eight years now but at the start I was always just looking at everyone else and uh, comparing myself to them following on from that number two I would say when it comes to comparing yourself to others it's also a case of don't just do what everyone else is doing you cannot copy what others are doing and expect results we are all so unique and we need unique plans that are tailored to our goals our body types and just our individual preferences like if you don't like running I'm not going to get you out running five days a week. If you don't like weightlifting, then you shouldn't be weightlifting if you don't want to. Of course, I do recommend weightlifting, but it's all about finding what works for you and what you actually enjoy doing and see yourself doing long term. So in terms of copying other people, honestly, I would go to the gym. There weren't many women in the gym at the time. So I would train with a lot of the guys at my university gym and I just did whatever they were doing. If they were doing bench, I'd do bench. If they were doing chest and triceps, I'd do chest and triceps. If they were doing arms, I'd do arms. I would do whatever they were doing in the gym and just train with them. And then they'd start telling me things like, oh, you know, don't do too much cardio. So I cut out all cardio and I just started doing weightlifting. They told me to eat more, so I ate more. I was just copying what everyone was doing. And obviously there is a big difference between men and women, but there is also a big difference between all kinds of women as well. It varies based on your height, your weight, your age, your daily activity. So it is so important that you don't just see what Sally's doing on YouTube or Instagram and go and copy her. She might be taller than you. She might have a more active lifestyle than you. Or on the flip side, someone else might be, you know, lighter than you. They might be taller than you so they can get away with eating more calories. Maybe they have more muscle mass than you. There's so many different things that come into play when in creating a training and nutrition plan and those things need to be taken into account you truly can't expect to copy what someone else is doing and get great results from that and I wish that someone had just you know told me that and just told me to stop looking online and copying what everyone else was doing number three looking at things online I guess all of these points kind of flow on from each other when it comes to looking at tips and tricks online it can be so overwhelming when you google how to lose weight or uh how 
can I lose fat? Whatever it is you're searching on YouTube, you're going to get, you know, millions and millions of links to different articles, different opinions, and it's just so, so confusing. So the number one thing I want to say here is that there's always going to be companies out there that are looking to make money from you. They will sell you quick fixes, they will sell you detox teas, waist trainers, every kind of fad diet and quick fix you can imagine. And I know because I've bought them before. If you look at my past transformation videos, you'll see that I actually fell into the trap of buying a detox tea one time on my journey, never again. But you know what, it happens. I learned from that. The detox tea did not work. I can confirm they are not a great idea for sustainable fat loss. So what is nutrition so when it comes to nutrition i was searching online all the time i was reading lots of different things probably not very reliable sources i wouldn't recommend just reading random blog posts online uh, and trusting that as your source of information medical journals are a great one there's a lot of good websites out there for getting information from just be aware of what you're actually reading and taking in and then also use some common sense around what you're going to choose to listen to because every every kind of opinion has two sides and there's going to be people that can back up each side and it really comes down to you thinking about it processing it and then deciding what you want to believe and what you want to apply to your fitness journey and your body so when I was reading things online I'd see stuff like high protein low carbs high fat low carbs keto diet paleo diet all those different things and I would try them but I try them for a week and then I change plans and then I try the next one for a week and I change so I went through I swear it must have been about a year at university where I would just not stick to anything in particular, try everything you can imagine and then not get results. And if anything, I was going the opposite way because I was eating more and I was rebounding from each diet that I tried. So if that sounds really familiar, the next tip is for you, nutrition. Number four, nutrition is the biggest game changer on my fitness journey and on anyone's fat loss or muscle building journey. You cannot, first thing, you cannot outwork a bad diet. So if you are thinking that, you know what, you can go to the gym Monday to Friday, then in the weekend, eat whatever you want, do whatever you want, or even just Monday to Friday, go to the gym and then eat whatever you want. It doesn't work like that. If you want to lose fat, you need to understand that the only way to lose fat is with a caloric deficit. Whether that's a keto diet, a vegan diet, a paleo diet, the overall thing that matters is the total amount of calories that you're getting in. Simply put, this is the easiest way I can think of it and how I wish someone had explained it to me when I started out is, if you get on a treadmill and you run and I stand next to you and I start eating slices of pizza while you're running, there is no way that you are going to burn more calories than I am standing there eating. So that is the most simple way I can explain it. And I wish that someone had told me it like that. You cannot outwork a bad diet. So what's really important is making sure that from day one, you understand the nutrition side of things. Understand that proteins, fats, and carbs play an important role on a muscle building journey and a fat loss journey. Get a gauge of how many calories you're putting into your body. Learn how to use my fitness pal if someone had just taught me how to use my fitness pal from day one of my journey and taught me about proteins fats carbs and overall calories i wouldn't be where i am now i would be so much further ahead and although i can't dwell on the past and you know regret that i didn't have that knowledge earlier i can of course stress the fact that it's so important for all of you to take this seriously to really take time to learn about what you're putting into your body and how you're fueling it in order to make sure that you aren't starving yourself to make sure that you're losing fat effectively and efficiently without doing you know long-term damage to your body and your metabolism so nutrition is definitely i mean i feel like nutrition is the biggest tip on any fitness journey and i wish that that was kind of the number one thing that i focused on when i started my journey but now i know about it i'm here to educate as many of you guys as i can so i hope that you really take this seriously and learn how to use my fitness to pal and understand the calories you're putting into your body Following on from a fat loss kind of theme, number five, you cannot spot reduce. And I'm sure you guys have heard this many times now. It's been very big on social media for a while. Everyone has been t saying things like, you can 
uh, you know, lose fat on your stomach by doing this simple exercise. You can lose fat on your thighs by doing this workout, tone tummy, this and that, all these key buzzwords that people want to hear because they want to lose fat in specific areas. But the truth is you actually cannot target fat loss. You can't say, I want to lose fat from my stomach in three weeks and do a magical diet in which you will lose fat only from your stomach. The key to losing fat is of course the nutrition side of it, the caloric deficit, but it's also consistency and exercise and nutrition. So you're not going to lose the fat that you've gained over years in just a few weeks or a few months. It's going to take time and often as women, fat is going to fall from our stomach and our hips and our thighs last due to the way that we are built. We are made to carry babies and our bodies are designed to store fat in certain areas. Certain people will store fat in different areas and that's due to just their genetic makeup, their hormones and things like that. But in general, if you want to lose fat from your stomach, it comes down to consistency with nutrition and training. If you are going to do a hundred sit-ups every single day, you might build like kind of a strong core, but you're not going to necessarily lose fat from your stomach unless your nutrition is on point with your fat loss goals. So if someone had told me that, you know what, you can't actually lose fat from your stomach by doing a whole lot of core workouts and you can't actually thin your legs by doing specific leg workouts, I would have focused on a progressive training program that worked my full body across the week and just focused on hitting my different muscle groups multiple times throughout the week instead of just targeting certain things like my thighs and my stomach. So I guess if you guys are looking to lose fat from your stomach in particular, be patient, work hard, control your nutrition Monday to Sunday, not just Monday to Friday, and the fat loss will come. It does happen, but it does take a lot of time to lose that fat that you have maybe, you know, built or gained in a few years. Number six, form is so important. I think one of the biggest things I am grateful that I did when I was in the gym is asking for help. Your form is the number one thing in terms of preventing injuries from happening whilst in the gym. We need to make sure that we are holding our core tight, doing certain exercises, that we are being mindful when we're in the gym. We're not thinking about other things. We're not playing on our phone. We're actually focused on the exercises that we're doing and really focusing on that muscle mind connection. So I never, when I started my fitness journey, had a muscle mind connection. I didn't even really know what it was. I wouldn't focus on the muscle group that I was working. I would just go through the motions of the workout. And although I had, like, I think, quite good form, I would sometimes, you know, prioritize lifting heavier with the boys instead of focusing on my form and taking the weight back and concentrating on that. So if you're new to the gym, focus on getting that form right. Do not be afraid to ask someone in the gym to help you. Ask one of the trainers. They're there to help. Don't feel kind of shy about asking for help or even reaching out to someone online that is a qualified coach that can help you. You can send them a video and get your form checked. So making sure that you prioritize your your form. Also, uh, making sure that you control your ego. Don't prioritize weight lifting and going heavy over that form. Form should be your number one thing in the gym before increasing the weight. Once you get a good form in place, then you can increase the weight and you'll find that you'll actually get stronger once you've got good form as well. Number seven, no one is looking at you in the gym. No one actually cares what you're doing. So when you go into the gym, don't feel embarrassed to go up to the squat rack if it's at the front of the gym or don't feel shy about, you know, using certain equipment that maybe you haven't used before. Just make sure again that your form is right and then do your thing. No one actually cares if anything. I feel like everyone in the gym is so focused on either their own training or checking themselves out in the mirror that they don't care what you're doing and they're not gonna be looking at you or judging you. And in all honesty, if there are people in the gym that are judging other people, one, you should be ashamed of yourself because you should not be judging anyone there trying to better themselves. And two, you know, if you're watching someone and you're kind of feeling like they're not quite doing something right and you feel as if they're going to injure themselves, 
there's two different ways you could feel about it. like of course you could go up and help them but it's very awkward like sometimes you just can't do that and I've had this happen a lot of times I've seen people doing certain exercises in the gym and I really want to help them but you have to gauge the situation like some people just don't want that help so you know what just step back focus on your own thing and don't look at anyone else but for those of you that are new to your fitness journey and you are feeling really intimidated about going into that weights section maybe you might decide that you want to go with a friend so you have that added confidence or maybe for your first few sessions in the gym get a trainer to take you through your workouts get them to show you the form get them to take you through each exercise so that you have a clear understanding of how to do things then when you go to go into the gym by yourself you'll feel that little bit more confident and that's a-okay to feel intimidated but just know that no one's watching you and no one actually cares what you're doing in the gym Number eight, this point is two different stances because obviously things change on my fitness journey. So the first thing when I started my fitness journey was cardio. I would, when I was in high school, I'm not kidding, I would go to the gym every day after school and I would bike 20 kilometers each day. I started running but didn't really like it on the treadmill. So I would run and then I'd start biking and I got kind of addicted to the bike at the gym and I would bike 20 Ks every single day and I just loved it. But I wasn't really thinking too much of fat loss. I just thought, oh, you know, it's exercise. It must be good for me. So I built up really good cardio fitness. I started doing some cardio circuits and all the kind of training that I was doing when I was at the end of my high school journey, when I was kind of 17 to 18, was cardio. It wasn't really any kind of weight training. And even if I did do weights, it was super high rep, like over 20 reps for every exercise. I had no idea what I was doing. So for me, then I thought cardio was the number one thing. I had no idea about weight weightlifting like keeping in mind you know this was nine to ten years ago I'm 26 years old now so I didn't really know much about weightlifting at all and then when I went to university it was a complete 180 flip the guys were saying lift weights they're telling me not to do cardio so I flipped it completely around I stopped doing any kind of cardio other than just riding my bike uh, to get to places because I didn't have a car and then weightlifting and it was heavy weightlifting so these are two polar opposites so the one mistake that I made was not finding that happy balance. It was two extremes of lots of cardio and no cardio at all. And what I think I wish someone had told me from the start was that cardio isn't, you know, the most effective for fat loss, but it's also not the enemy. Like <laughs> there's two complete extremes. And I wish that someone had just told me that the most effective way to shape my body would be through nutrition, followed by weight training, followed by a suitable amount of cardio that is great for overall health, heart health, and just general well-being. <laughs> I mean, I think I just spent too much time on each extreme, and now I've kind of found a happy balance of not doing hours of cardio on a treadmill or on a bike or on a rower and not doing um, intense circuits or anything like that. I really focus on weightlifting. I have a step goal of about 8,000 steps a day minimum, and if I want to go on the treadmill after a workout, I'll go on a treadmill after my workout, especially heading into winter when it's raining outside a lot. And I'll just do some light steps on the treadmill. So for me, I guess the number one tip here in terms of cardio is that cardio is not bad, but it's also not the most effective for fat loss. Focus on your weight training. Don't be afraid of doing cardio. If you enjoy it, go for it. If you don't really enjoy it, don't feel like you have to do hours of it. Just find that happy balance and what works for you. Number nine would be that food is our friend. Our bodies need food. We need to nourish our bodies with good foods that we enjoy and just find again it's all to do with that balance so for me i was just so throughout my whole journey so restricted then i'd go the polar opposite 180 flip and i'd go the other way and it would end up me eating everything that i wasn't eating when i was restricted and competing i thought would help that so competing did help it. i learned a lot about nutrition it was the first time i ever saw my abs in 2017 when i leaned down for a competition i learned a lot about nutrition but it was a very restricted prep for 16 weeks and i've talked more about it in my binge eating videos and my uh, comp prep journey videos my q a's and things like that so i won't go into that but just taking it back to when i started my fitness journey uh i think 
restriction was a big issue for me and it would have just been so much better if I was balanced. So Monday to Friday, it's all well and good if you want to eat nutritiously and count your calories and things, but come Saturday, Sunday, you can't just go the 180 flip and go the opposite and you know eat everything that you didn't eat in the week because often it ends up that you end up overeating so much that you take yourself out of a weekly calorie deficit and you might maintain weight or on the flip side, you might even go further and be in a caloric surplus across the week. So even if you ate say 1500 calories Monday to Friday, but then on the weekend you're eating 4000 calories a day, you've taken yourself out of that deficit and you'll find yourself feeling really frustrated that you're either maintaining weight or gaining weight week after week after week and I know this feeling because I've been there before so a big thing I wish that someone had told me when I started my journey is that calories count in the weekend even if you don't count them that Monday to Sunday matters you need to find that happy balance across the week but also you need to find that happy balance with the food choices that you're making one cookie isn't going to set you back but if you're eating that one cookie turning into one pack of cookies each day taking you out of a caloric deficit it is going to set you back so I guess for nutrition and balance and things like that, I wish someone had just honestly taught me about the macros. It really goes back to counting calories and understanding what I'm fueling my body with. We need the food. Under eating necessarily isn't going to be better for you. It really just depends on your goals, your body type, and so much more. So just make sure that you are taking care of your body, feeding it micronutrients as well as those macronutrients of proteins, fats, and carbs, and hitting some fiber to help with your digestion and gut health. I also didn't realize when I started my fitness journey how important gut health was for overall well-being in terms of our hormonal health as well. Number 10, having some clear goals. So why are you doing what you're doing each day? Why do you want to go to the gym? Why do you want to lose weight? Understanding why you want to do something means that you kind of have that motivation when you're not feeling like doing something. So if you know you have a wedding coming up and you've got to fit your dress because it's already completed and you know you've got to fit a certain size, then when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like going to the gym or you don't feel like eating a certain way throughout the day, you remind yourself, you know what, I've got this dress dress to fit. I really want to feel my best when I put that dress on on my wedding day and have a deeper why. Like it has to be more than I want to look good for, you know, this boy or this girl, whatever the reason is. It needs to be something that really drives you. So instead of doing it for someone else, do it for yourself. Like for the mere fact of me feeding my body with good foods, I know how it makes me feel and that is enough motivation for me to pick myself up and get back on track when I might fall off. So having that clear why really means that even if you do fall off track, you can get back on. So in terms of your goals and things like that, it might be maybe you're a bit older and you've got kids and you wanna have the energy to be able to run around with your kids. Maybe it is a wedding dress. Maybe it's that you have a high school reunion and you just wanna go in they're feeling your best version of you so that you can you know just feel good I guess my main driver for my fitness journey is how it makes me feel so you don't feel like your fitness journey is a chore or a hassle because taking care of yourself is so important and we only get one body to live in so we may as well take care of it and I guess throughout my fitness journey I had highs and lows on it where I was doing it more of like a punishment you know if I ate too much I'd go for a run and I built really negative um, habits with food and a relationship with food and the relationship that we have with food and ourselves is one of the most important relationships we'll have because it determines how we feel about ourselves and that goes into how we treat our kids or how we treat our partners and every other relationship in our life so I really want to stress that you guys get those clear goals and then once you have that clear goal in line get a plan in place on how you're going to achieve it it's all well and good to write a goal down but a goal without a plan is like you've heard it said many times before just a dream so you need a clear plan in place set little milestones that you can achieve throughout your journey so it might be that you're swapping out fizzy for water set these little daily habits that you're doing each day you're walking 6,000 steps instead of 3,000 steps 8,000 steps increase those steps as you go maybe you are eating takeaways less so create the goal have a clear why then start working on daily habits in order to take you closer to that greater goal to get you feeling better and then 
get a plan in place. So that plan might be your own plan, but if you've been trying and you're not achieving your goals, I highly recommend getting a customized and personalized plan to you and your goals. Make sure that your nutrition and your training is aligned to your lifestyle, your personal um, preferences, your height, your weight, your age, your daily activity, and so much more. And getting a plan in place will help you stay accountable and it'll help you achieve your goals and feel satisfied, feel like you're actually achieving your goals that you set for yourself so that you show up for yourself. I would say the number one regret on my fitness journey, I'm not a big person for regret, but the number one thing on my fitness journey is not getting help from day one. I wish that I had clearly written down my goals, thought about them and then gone to get someone to help me because I wasted so much time trying fad diets, buying detox teas, looking online for quick fixes, trying every kind of diet you can imagine and just wasting a whole lot of time. And in all honesty, I only ever really got results when I decided to sign up and get a coach to help me stay accountable, to teach me and to learn how to get those results. And that was in 2017, so only three years ago. And I've been on my journey for about eight years. So I got a coach for my first ever WBFF competition. And from there, I just went from coach to coach and learned a lot. And then obviously studied and learned myself so that I could help others to prevent them from making these same mistakes that I have made. Honestly, if you're struggling on your fitness journey, please never hesitate to reach out to me. I am here to help. Wow. Oh my, that was a lot of talking. I just feel like I'm so passionate about these things because I truly have tried everything on my fitness journey and I don't want you guys to make the same mistakes that I have made in the past. So if you have any questions at all or even if you have any tips for anyone else listening to this video, please comment them below. I would love to read your tips or answer any questions that you have. I really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to listen to my videos. And if you haven't yet done it, please make sure that you subscribe. Click that little bell button because it will notify you each time I upload a video. I'm aiming to post two videos a week, every single week. Thank you for joining me on my fitness journey and supporting me. I appreciate every single one of you. Hope you all have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world. Bye.